Hey there, Becca here from Inside the Square and welcome back to my channel. I am so excited to be sharing this tutorial today because it's one of my most requested for the last like six months or so. What we're going to do is add an image inside an accordion item description. And then we're going to add an alternative image for the second accordion item description. That's right, we're going to place an image in the description and we're going to do a unique image for each individual item. So much fun stuff to cover. Now, to be honest, this tutorial is a little bit more advanced than the tutorials that I usually share. But rest assured, I'm here to walk you through it step by super simple step. It's definitely easy to understand as long as you watch the whole video and watch me add this code and how I do each individual change that we're about to do. Now, underneath this video, you'll find the base code that I use, but you'll also find a link to my original blog post for this tutorial. There, I've outlined all of the steps we're about to take along with each part of the code that we're adding. We've got a lot of details to cover. So if you're brand new to CSS or still in the beginning phases of getting comfortable with CSS, please check out the link in the description below to watch this video on my blog post. If you're already on my blog, just scroll down a little bit. All the content is there. All right, enough talking. Let me show you this magic. I'll go ahead and share my screen so we can get started. Here we are inside Squarespace, and I'm going to scroll down a little bit to show you. I've got an accordion block here on my page. If I click open any of these items, we'll see the text description. In this description is where we'll add an image that's going to sit there with the text. It's not a background of the text. It's a separate image. Our first step will be to upload our images. Then we'll add our custom code. We'll change the style of the display, and then we'll update that code for multiple images. I'm going to teach you how to do all of this step by super simple step. And all of this is done in our custom CSS panel. To get there, you need to select website and then website tools and then custom CSS. I've also outlined the steps in the blog post that's linked to the description below. If you're already on my blog, just look underneath this video and you'll find all of these steps outlined with more details. Alrighty, here we are in custom CSS. And to do step one, we need to upload our images to our custom files. I think it's really important to have your image that you're using hosted with the rest of your content, so I recommend uploading your image here. Now, I already have a photo of Gus the Pineapple. I'm going to click this plus sign to grab another photo from my computer. And now we have Sean and Gus, two pineapples that we're going to feature inside the accordion description. All right, we've added our images. Let's get to the custom code. The first thing we need to do is say we're about to change something about the accordion item description. The selector for that is accordion item description. But what we're going to do is add content before it. So I'm going to use the colon symbol and I'll type before. And let me go ahead and open up a curly bracket. I'll zoom in on the screen so you can see the code. And I'll open up this accordion item so we can see what's happening. Okay, let's keep going with our code. The next thing I want you to do is add a content placeholder. You're going to say content and then add a space in between quotation marks. Then we'll add a semicolon and a new line of text that's going to say display block then a semicolon and a new line of text. And this is where we're going to set the width and the height for the image. We're not going to see anything happen yet. And I'll show you what happens when we change these values later. But we're going to go ahead and add them right now. We'll say width 90px and height 90px. Now adding a semicolon between each of those, notice we now have a big space in that accordion item. That space is where we're going to put our image. Here we'll say background image. URL, and then I'll open up a parentheses, and we'll see a list of the two images we've uploaded to our custom files. Let's start with Gus. I'll click on Gus, and the URL for Gus is going to go right there in the background image. But all we see is yellow. Gus is a really big file, and we can't see the whole file here, so we have more code to add. I'm going to say background size contain. And now Gus will be limited to that square that we've created that's 90 pixels in width and 90 pixels in height. Again, you'll find all of these codes on the blog post along with the other details, but let's talk about some editing here before we keep going. We've added one image and we can change the width of it to maybe 120 and the height to 120. But did you notice, let me go back here, when we left the height at 90, do you see the second image of Gus? This background will repeat as many times as necessary to fill the space that we've created. If you don't want it to repeat, add a semicolon and say background repeat no repeat. And we'll only have one Gus in every instance here. Okay. So again, we change the width and we can change the height by adjusting these values right here. All right. This part is super duper important. 
When I close this accordion item 1, check it out. Gus is also here in accordion item 2, and he's also here in accordion item 3, which is not what we want. We want to have a different image here. Let's assume that you want the same size image in each one of these instances, but we want to feature Sean for accordion item 2, Sean the pineapple. Let's go ahead and do that. The first thing we need to do is say, hey, we only want this in the second accordion. So I'm going to say accordion item nth child 2, meaning when you see the second accordion. Then we're going to say accordion item description before, and we're going to change the background image, but just for this one. I'll say background image, spelled correctly, there we go, URL, and now we'll select Sean the pineapple. And I'll say exclamation point important, and we'll close our curly bracket. And now Sean the pineapple is featured in the second accordion item. Now we're still using the content, the display style, the width and the height and background size and background repeat. All of those settings are the same. All we changed was the image itself. If you want to change each individual image size and background repeat setting, you'll need to recreate this line of code. Just make sure you specify, is it the first, second, or third accordion item? You've got to make sure you identify which accordion item you're changing. But let's go ahead and open up accordion item one. There's Gus. Accordion item two, there's Sean. Accordion item three, we're seeing Gus again because we haven't specified anything else. We'll need to add a new line of code that says accordion item nth child three, accordion item description before, and we'll go ahead and say content none. We don't want an image there. So we have an image in the second that's Sean the pineapple. We have an image in the first that's Gus the pineapple, but in the third item, we don't have anything. So that's how you can update this code for multiple images. Now, we covered a lot of advanced stuff. Again, check out my blog post linked in the description below. I've got some details there about each one of these settings and some sample codes that you can just copy and paste into Squarespace to give it a try. But there's one more thing I want to teach you in this tutorial. When we take a look at this accordion item, we have the image at the top and the text on the bottom. If you want them side by side, we have another code to add. I'll enter a new line and I'm going to say accordion item description display flex. This will place the image on the left and the text on the right. So here's where it gets tricky. If you're saying accordion item description flex and you've got the image on the left and the content on the right, you'll need to make some major edits to line four right here, the width of these images, increasing it to maybe 250 px for a much larger space. You can also add a little bit of space between the image and the text by adding a margin on the right. I'll go ahead and place at the bottom of our code here. We'll add a semicolon and I'll say margin right. How about 15 px? There we go. Now we've got a little bit of spacing between Gus the pineapple and the text, and you'll see the same effect happening for Sean and the text in accordion item two. So just a reminder, what we changed, we adjusted the width so it would take up more space, and we adjusted the margin right to get a distance between the text and the image. I'll go ahead and select save, and we'll consider this accordion good to go. If you want to use this code for a specific accordion block, you can do so by using its block ID. If you're not familiar with this technique, check out the links in the description below. We just covered a lot of content in this tutorial. Thanks for watching it all the way to the end. Underneath this video, if you're watching this on YouTube, you're going to find a link to my original blog post where I've listed out all of the additional steps and codes, things that I couldn't fit inside the YouTube description. So please head over to the blog post to check that out. If you're watching this on my blog, just scroll down a little bit. You'll find all of the steps from this tutorial the codes that you can copy and customize into your own Squarespace website to make it uniquely yours. Thank you so much for watching this video. I truly hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give it a like. Let me know in the comments while you're down there that you loved it. And what else you'd like to learn how to customize in Squarespace? I'm always eager for more ideas. Thanks again for watching this video. And most importantly, have fun with your Squarespace website. Bye for now. This tutorial is just one example of all the amazing things that you can do to customize Squarespace with CSS. If you're brand new to code, I would love to teach you the basics so you can start creating your own. Head on over to insidethesquare.co forward slash learn. There you can grab my free guide to CSS basics specifically for Squarespace. That's insidethesquare.co forward slash learn.